Alrighty everyone, welcome back. It is now October 9th of 2023 and given that Bob Iger and himself as a Disney CEO is in a real extreme position right now based on everything that has been happening with the Disney Board of Directors and their involvement with this hot mess that they're dealing with Marvel, Star Wars, and Disney in general, let alone the ongoing failure of 2023 as a whole for themselves, not just with the Disney stock, but of course the multiple box office failures on their front. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. Now, one thing about Bob Iger is that this man always tends to lie. He likes to string along his customers, those that, of course, are subscribed to services like ESPN, Hulu, whatever have you, Disney+. Plus. Basically what he is doing is he is trying to please the shareholders until the end of this year leading into the beginning of 2024 because a lot of this has to do with the ongoing Disney purge which by the way was greenlit by Iger and the board that is now moving at full force. Let's discuss. Now what's interesting about this is that this is considered the second phase of his cost containment plan that is indeed going to wreak havoc over at Disney. It really is, because we know that it includes a lot of changes within the company that's going to impact thousands of people, and roughly, you know, we know that it's going to impact large-scale productions to getting downgraded quite drastically. But let's get down to the specifics of what's really going on here, and what it means for Disney and the future for the years to come. Now, with Disney currently in a delicate position with their content and different, uh, and different fandoms giving them backlash, such as Star Wars and Marvel, one major development has to do with the ongoing Disney purge that will go active mainly in 2024 that is already beginning to proceed. A, an important update surrounding this development involves Bob Iger's second phase of the cost containment plan that he will be announcing during the first week of November during the last earnings call of 2023. This is set to include thousands of Disney employees getting fired from multiple productions and aspects of the Disney company for Marvel, Star Wars, ESPN, Hulu, Disney+, and even in the corporate ladder as well. Additionally, Disney is set to purge Star Wars and Marvel content on Disney+. Plus. This includes TV shows and movies, ones that's, that are specifically not meeting a specific margin of viewership, and audience retention that will be the factors into the decision to remove said content while also raising rates for everything related to their business models. Now, guys, let me say one thing about this before I really continue here. We know that like Netflix, they are going to be raising rates after the SAG strike ends, and seemingly now Disney is going to follow. Now, we know that Disney is a very greedy company. They probably have no need to raise rates. The one thing that I think most likely is the main reason, if it's not out of greed, which is saying a lot, I still think it is, but there might be one reason behind all of this, and it could very well be that there are a lot of people subscribing faster than those that are signing up. That's leading to them really being forced in a position to raise rates. I would think it's not the latter. I think that they're just greedy, to be honest. But let me say one thing here about this extreme situation for Disney right now is that they are moving forward officially with this Disney purge, with this second phase of the cost containment plan, which will, by the way, involve firings, which will also incl include large-scale productions getting downgraded to small-scale productions. What does this mean for the customers or the viewers out there, you know, audience members, is that movies from this point on by Disney are going to look cheaper, they're going to be shorter, and they're not going to have as much stardom power, per se. You're not going to have as many A-list actors and actresses from this point on forward in many Star Wars, Marvel, and just Disney projects in general. But it gets worse. We're not done yet. Oh, we're not done yet. So on top of that, multiple Star Wars TV shows and movies have already been canceled behind the scenes, most of which were ones that were left unannounced at, of course, Star Wars Celebration and for the unofficial D23, which, by the way, was, was kind of like a half-and-half -half version this year. On top of that, since Disney did not have a proper D23 event this year as usual, the firings which were proposed by 
Bob Iger and quickly accepted by all members of the board, is also going to involve the removal of multiple high-value creators. This involves directors, writers, and producers, part of Marvel and Star Wars, that will be laid off from Disney by spending less on stardom power and experienced creators to create a proper budget. That is going to be very limited, by the way. This is a part of their budgeting limitations and their cutbacks. Now, before I get to the grand finale of this entire situation for Disney, is that you can tell that their budget limitations are getting stricter and stricter, stricter by the month. And I think a lot of that is rooted to the ever-failing Disney stock. It is getting worse every single month, and I don't think it's going to stop or even slow down at that matter for the remainder of this year leading into the beginning of 2024. A lot of shareholders are unhappy. I'm not talking about the, sh the top shareholders, of course, like BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street, etc. But I think that a lot of shareholders, regular ones, are very unhappy. Everyone that I know that owns Disney stock, they are actually bailing. They are ditching Disney stock and or the ones that haven't yet are really feeling very, well, not so confident about where Disney is going for the next couple of years. It's not a good looking pattern right now. So this is where things really cap off here. So let's get to the next big thing. The grand finale is that, of course, while at the same exact time, Iger has been pushing a narrative that Disney is doing just fine regardless of this endless pit that they have found themselves in currently. These firings will also impact employees attached to the Disney parks around the globe. This is a result of the lower attendees at some of their destinations, mostly impacting the Orlando destination that was approved by the board after Iger's request. Major A-list stars will also be removed from upcoming Marvel and Star Wars projects from specific sequels planned and mapped out that will be announced in the coming months. Disney has already removed creator Jon Favreau from multiple Lion King projects as per the Lion King universe that they are developing in the early stages. This will include a Scar spin-off and a Lion King 2019 sequel, not to be confused with the Mufasa prequel. Alright, so we know that they want to at least push out more than three Lion King movies to kind of set up this miniature you know, Lion King universe. They wanted to do that with Snow White by making a small-scale Snow White universe, and that did not work out. That fell apart because of Gal Gadot and the whole drama with Rachel Zegler, and we have a lot more to talk about that. But what's interesting about this is that they ditched Jon Favreau, who really was responsible for producing The Lion King back in 2019, who has less involvement in the Mufasa prequel and will have zero involvement in any other further Disney projects. Now, we already know that they are cutting back on Jon Favreau and his involvement on multiple Star Wars TV shows, and I think that's why they have been absolutely zip about him as of late and more focused on Dave Filoni. Even though I feel Filoni was very flawed with the Ahsoka series, I will be honest with you guys, I did not enjoy that show from start to finish. I was not impressed. And there's a lot of plot holes, a lot of answers that need to be, you know, put at the forefront for that show that weren't. But what's interesting about this is that this is an ever-evolving failure for Disney. So I would like to hear what you guys have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys next time.